Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Amsterdam. We're in Europe for a KubeCon Cloud Native Con EU. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're Rob Streche here, my CUBE analyst. Got a great guest, Pete Brave with IBM, global product executive, and uh, great. Great to have you on. IBM, obviously we've been to every IBM event since theCUBE started. Um, we've covered all the different events. Just watching the progression, but now more than ever, you're seeing the cloud native world, the IT world modernizing, it's all happening. Your booth's hot, I'm glad you came on. I want to get your perspective, but thanks for yeah. coming on. Yeah, thank you very much. So talk about what's going on at IBM here at the booth. A lot of traffic, the giveaways, we're going to comment in a minute. It's some great swag, but yeah. tons of traffic. A lot of activity. Yeah, lots of, lots of activity, and it's really interesting to see the maturity level of the conversations that we're having now with the, you know, a lot of the people that are showing up at the booth. They're asking more advanced questions about Kubernetes and how to use Kubernetes in their real world environments. You know, topics like, how do I back up you know, my <laughs> Kubernetes applications? How do I restore? How do I handle disaster recovery and things like that? And it's really, it's interesting when I was at Red Hat, I used to talk about this concept of enterpriseification. I know that's not a word, but <laughs> enterpriseification of Kubernetes, you yeah. know, and you could see it coming. Yeah, yeah. And really what was exciting, I think, here in Amsterdam is we're seeing those conversations now, which is really It's impressive. interesting, so you brought up the uh, enterpriseification. I like that term because it speaks to how, why Red Hat was successful. They really, you know, we had a big debate, could be another Red Hat. Every five years is the debate, can there be another Red Hat? But Red Hat, what they did with Linux early on for enterprise support was the critical thing. Yeah. But now Kubernetes is coming in from a different angle, a lot more robust ecosystem. Yeah. And the need for hardened, reliable yeah. Kubernetes, but it's got to run with cloud native. Yeah. You know, and the other thing that I've noticed here at the show is, talking to some of the people like us that have been around a little while, you know, we've kind of lived some of the pains that the Kubernetes community is dealing with right now, like you know the topics I just mentioned about disaster right. recovery. Well, the good news is we kind of already figured out what all the corner cases are and what are the challenges you're going to run into. And what I've seen in the industry now, in the, in the Kubernetes industry in particular, is an acceleration of addressing those issues. So, you know, whereas back in the virtualization days, it may have taken us three, three to five years to solve a problem, yeah. that's being solved in six to nine months yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, we were just talking early on, Rob and I were talking, like, one of the, the AI moments that we're seeing right now, just in the past hundred days, I know the papers came out for this show in November, so not a lot of AI in the tracks, but before the, the cloud, to start a company to do all these things, and then cloud came out, okay, I can provision on the cloud, get started, and only took this amount of things to do. Now with AI, you can get done with this amount. Yeah. Meaning, one person, an engineer or two, and some AI, you can actually build an MVP, so that means more, more traction quicker right. is happening, which means projects used to take a longer time are happening faster. What's your reaction to that? What are you seeing? Is that, do you believe that's the same true? That, and, and what's your pers perspective it's, on that? It's really interesting, and Rob and I were just talking about this, you know, the impact of technology, you know, and bringing even AI into the equation here, it's certainly accelerating things, but there's another aspect of the cultural change that it's, you know, and the cultural challenges that it's posing for these organizations, you know, and the changing roles and the prevalence of some teams versus other teams, you know, being able to address not only how to use the new technology, but how the business can benefit from that technology. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because I think that it's actually changed even the, the buying cycle for some of these companies and who is here at yeah. KubeCon. I, I think some of the conversations have been fascinating. Uh, well, I was talking to the VP of development for a small IoT company and he was saying, I, I've been virtualized for years, now I'm trying to figure out I, I know I'm building microservices, but they're in, packaged in VMs. How do I get to Kubernetes? And what, okay. where do I go with that? And do I go to a cloud? Do I do continue on-prem? Yeah. Are these some of the uh, discussions that you're seeing at more the CXO level type things where they're trying to figure out how do we 
not just take the cloud native apps, but some of the more heavier apps that we had. Yeah, it's really interesting to see this and, and the, the heterogeneous environment that these organizations are dealing with because, you know, a lot of organizations have very built up, you know, virtualized infrastructure. And like I said earlier, it's a very well understood problem. Right. But what's happened over the past few years is the prevalence of public cloud solutions has really changed culturally what's going on in these organizations, you know, where you have a situation where app developers can plop down a credit card, yeah. be up and running very, very quickly, and not saying that that's shadow IT, but it's certainly causing some issues for these organizations, and how do they get their arms around, you know, th some of the, the, the challenges around um, budgeting for, for those things, security, compliance, um, these are all challenges that these organizations are dealing with, and what's interesting is that a lot of it is coming back to the CIO, and right. they're being asked, can you help rein this in? You know, we understand you didn't cause the problem, <laughs> but now you need to help fix it. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a really changing market. I'm really glad we had a chance to bring you on, but I do want to ask two more questions before we wrap up, though. What, what are you currently working on now? What's your role at IBM? What's your objectives? Obviously here, open source is growing. The market's got either got a headwind or a tailwind, depending on where you are right now yeah. with technology, it's opportunities. So what, what's your role, what are you doing right now? Yeah, so I joined IBM last summer and I'm part of the IBM Fusion team. And when I first started with IBM on the Fusion team, we were thinking of it as a data services platform. But the more we've learned about this market is our customers need more than just the data services. They need a platform to be able to deploy, what we were talking about earlier, to deploy Kubernetes, to bring Kubernetes in very quickly. And the challenge that they're having is, it's a brand new technology. They don't have the time to retrain and relearn this new tech, and it is very different, right? You know, you're talking about microservices versus virtual machines. It's a very, very different world. And so they're challenged with that type of thing. So what's exciting about what we're working on with IBM Fusion is, we're a deployment platform for Red Hat OpenShift. You know, so we can get OpenShift out there very, very quickly. And a lot of our early customers, we surveyed them in December and we asked them, why did you buy Fusion? And they said, because it accelerates our OpenShift deployment. And so it was really impressive to see that you know, we're helping these organizations at a much higher level. Yeah. It's the day two ops on one hand, but also standing up day one operations yeah. for cloud. It's an interesting yeah. market. Exactly, exactly. It's, uh, it's really an acceleration overall, but these organizations are still dealing with these challenges of, <laughs> you know, you've got in hybrid cloud, right? You know, you can't talk long about IBM <laughs> without talking about yeah. and mentioning hybrid yeah. cloud. Yeah. It is true. I mean, these organizations are facing You guys, IBM's doing great in hybrid cloud, and obviously all the enterprise companies, and the guys location, as you say, is key, and looking forward to hearing more from yeah. you. Final question, I got to put the reporter hat on here. Contribute to the Cube editorial. What's the most important story happening at KubeCon Amsterdam? What are you seeing? What's the top, what's the story that everyone's talking about and what's the story that, that's most important that no one's talking about? I think the most important story right now is, and you can sense it in the people that walk into the booth that they know that this is a very important trend that's happening here. And so they're here to absorb as much and to learn from a lot of the early adopters. So to me, that's the big story. And if, as I compare back to previous KubeCons, you, it's really interesting to see you know, the, yeah. pe the attendees and the conversations that they're having now versus even just six to 12 months ago. Yeah. It's very much, there's a thirst, there's a desire to understand the technology and how to be able to deploy it. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for coming on. I think Fusion and Red Hat, great combination. Certainly Red Hat continues to do great with OpenShift. Yeah. We had a lot of the folks come on, share their stories here yeah. on the engineering side. So Pete, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you. All right, we can sneak in every interview count until they pull the plug on us. It's theCUBE, we'll go all day, two days, all day tomorrow. I'm John Furrier, Rob Streche here. We'll be right back with more interviews and our swag review with Savannah <laughs> Peterson coming up next. Stay with us. <laughs>